Now, technically speaking, this is only going to make sense if you understand convolutional neural networks, uh, fully convolutional networks, maybe, and the winner of the Johnny Depp lawsuit. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm going to start with relevance. So, UNET was developed in 2015, which is a pretty long time ago. That's seven years ago. Um, Mascar CNN, on the other hand, which is also a popular segmentation um, model, was developed by Facebook, released in 2018. Now, Mask CNN is way more robust than UNET because it's trained on more data and it can perform um, instance-wise segmentation. UNET is still somewhat relevant because it, it shines in specific use cases. A good example of a use case for UNET would be this. This was released in 2021, uh, mapping legal waste dumping sites. And if you take a look at this data, yes, so one, when you're working with satellite imagery, there's a chance you'd have a low number of training images. And um, two, for this kind of problem, you don't need instance-wise segmentation. You just need to um, segment what you're looking for. And in this case was or is uh, illegal dumping sites. And three is the labels are prone to elastic deformation. So this looks like a perfect use case for UNET. And this is why UNET was trained on images that looks like uh, that looks like this. While Mascar CNN on the other hand was trained on images that you see every day. So images of uh, of people, cars, where is it again? Yeah, so mask are standing strained on images that looks like this. So if if you had a problem where you wanted to fucking hell dude. Yeah. Well essentially what I'm saying is if you want to segment something that looks like um you know what? Something that looks like this, for example. Uh you know, different colors, different backgrounds, and there's a chance you want uh, instant segmentation of this object, then you're better off retraining a mask CNN model. All right, so back to the summary. Um, the introduction is basically like flexing, um, just highlighting how and why UNET is better than previous uh, methods. Well, this right here, where is it? Yeah, network architecture. This is probably what you're here for. And this is where your previous knowledge of convolutions and uh, max pulling and all of that stuff comes in so right at the bottom right you have legends and this legend essentially explains what's happening in this uh, figure if if you haven't noticed the architecture looks like a u and that's basically why it's called a unit which is i think it's pretty clever on the left uh one two three four to this final 32 square you have the encoding or down sampling or contracting stage and on the right you have uh, the decoding or expansive or also called um, up sampling stage and this uh, final layer not final this in the middle is called the bottleneck um, this uh, filters you see 64 64 uh, 128 256 512 these are called filters um these blue arrows are three by three convolutions uh three by three convolutional layers activated by relu uh these are the x and y uh size of your input images and this uh red downward arrow represents a two by two max pulling and what a two by two max pulling does of course is reduce uh, the dimension of your image so when you pass say an 8x8 image through a max pulling layer a 2d max pulling layer then you come out with a 4x4 uh, image at the end so this reduces the, the dimensions by 2 and you also have uh, the green upward arrow which is up conv 2x2 it, 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 I think it's it's sort of like a um, an opposite of max pulling copy and crop this gray arrow is also called uh, concatenate 
now in the bottleneck there is no max pulling there is no up conv it it also extract features but uh, the size of your image doesn't change so the last arrow which is this lighter blue one by one convolution is activated by softmax and that's your final layer data augmentation you have uh where is it again okay so you have shift rotation uh deformations and gray value variations nice choice and experiments it was tested on three major uh segmentation tasks which are all biomedical and the first one is a set of 30 images from serial section transmission electron microscopy of the drosophy <laughs> essentially the images looks like this and um, how did they perform? The three metrics used were wrapping error, round error, and pixel error. And um, <laughs> this is actually better than unit. It's, this is just like, it's essentially like me saying my own country is the best in the world because we make the best jello fries. <laughs> just saying. The second challenge was tested on uh, is the ISBI cell tracking challenge and it has an IOU of 0.9203 for the first task and 0.7756 for the second task. This is more like it, I believe. This is this is way better. Yeah. And this is actually better than the results from this other research. Uh, I believe, yes, yes. So here they had a, an IOU of 0.6304. Uh, when, when something like this happens, you have to take a look at uh, so many other circumstances that are surrounding this problem so you have to you have to ask uh, was was this research uh, model centric or data centric because this was this was uh, actually trained on close to 2000 images but it still doesn't really perform as well as it should the major problem being it's classified new construction sites as dumping sites which is technically understandable so yeah anyway uh conclusion so it only needs few annotated images yeah that's correct as a very reasonable training time of only 10 hours well this is this was back in 2015 so you had um so you had nvidia 900 series or something so yeah that's that's pretty much it pass it into our uh, Another three by three. <laughs>